Hi guys, today I'm going to talk to you about sprouts and sprouting um, different grains and seeds and I have a guest um, who's going to help me out today. This is my friend Manolo Tristan and he has very recently, only a month ago, has transitioned to a raw vegan uh, lifestyle and he's going to share some of his experiences with you as well while we talk about sprouts and hopefully ask me some really good questions um, because I've been eating this way for so long that some of the things are um, uh, I take for granted, I don't think about them anymore. And so when he asks me these questions, I think, wow, this is so great. So this will help you also, hopefully, to answer some of your questions as we talk. Yeah, yeah you're welcome. Good. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Yeah. This is so fun. This is such a good thing for your body, for your soul, for your mind. I love it. I'm never going back. Yeah, wow, that's, yeah. Uh, that's something. So. Yeah, yeah. And you had a, um, like, what was your, what what kind of things did you eat right before this, when you transitioned? I wouldn't say, I didn't eat unhealthy. I mean, I did, like, a steak. I did, like, a nice wine before. So you still ate, um, like, meat, and you yeah, drank alcohol, dairy, kind yeah. of like a regular diet. Yeah, yeah. Um, coffee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, but nothing, you know, there's a saying, nothing tastes as good as healthy feels. I mean... It's so true because I wake up 5.30 in the morning, not even tired, like a, like an animal, like, oh, let's go. You know, it's not like I'm, oh, I'm so tired. That's beautiful to yeah, hear. Yeah, yeah, it's, that's just, that's how I start my day is I wake up and I'm not tired. My joints feel great. I mean, I do have a sauna and I've been doing that too, but my joints, oh, it's, you, you, you feel more natural when you eat real whole, natural, alive food. So I love it. I love it. And I think that's what you told me um, mm -hmm. when I saw you a couple months ago prior to the to your mm -hmm. change, right? Mm -hmm. You told yeah. me this, that you feel fine, but that, like you kind of feel a little bit low on energy yeah. or like a little bit, right? Yeah, so that's beautiful to hear that, yeah. that that was a change. I yeah. very well to feel that. That's awesome. Yeah, I love it. It's, it's, a, it's just a overall, a, a, you know, your, your tongue, my tongue, I can feel transitioned a little bit. Um, I've lost eight pounds without even working out. I'm going to start in incorporating. One month. I'm yeah. Start, yeah, yeah. I, I, no workout. I mean, again, sauna helps too. But just whenever you whenever you focus on on doing the right thing for your body, your body pays you back big time. Absolutely. Where you put that energy of wanting to eat something healthy, it just comes back to you, and your body thanks you for it. It's it's uh, it's just a wonderful feeling. It, it, it's a little bit of work. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. You have to plan. I got a dehydrator. I got a spiralizer. I got to convert my kitchen and do all these kinds of things. But if you do the prep work with with your help, she's been awesome. Um, it it just it's just so much better. All you know, I think I'm converting my parents a little bit. You know, That's cool. That's cool. So That's it's good. Really it's cool. good. I love it. It's yeah. overall an amazing thing. And it's true what you say. Like when the body feels in harmony, like <clears> harmonious. <throat> then it becomes healthy and then it looks good and it feels good and you oh, have yeah. energy and yeah. motivation and, and you feel inspired. Yeah. So I think of sprouts as a miracle food. It is um, the least expensive, the most nutritious and the most healing. Like it's, it is like a miracle um, food, the most healing food because it is so vibrantly alive because you have just awakened the seed, which are all of these are seeds, the, the, the chickpeas and the lentils are all seeds, and you are awakening the seed with water by um, soaking it, and it comes to life. And it, it, at that it, moment... As it's coming to life, it's starting to just... Yes. You're, you're ba able to put that in your body, and yes. you feel alive. I mean, yes, absolutely. And it's full of enzymes. It's full of whatever nutrients that plant brings to you. Uh, it's delicious in my opinion, although... You have to try different sprouts to see which ones you know mm -hmm. you really like, um, and it's so easy to do. Mm -hmm. So this here are sprouted lentils that have already been sprouted. It takes a few days to sprout. This here is sprouted buckwheat. These are not fully sprouted, but you can already eat them. These are chickpeas. I love them. So delicious. And this right here is a mix of seeds, of three different seeds, and also lentils and mung beans. So I love this mix. It's so delicious. 
So those four that I have already sprouted today, but you can also sprout sunflower seeds, um, you can sprout different beans, so many things you can sprout. Um, they make these sprouting lids for mason jars that are, that come, you can buy these on Amazon, that come in three different perforations, like the openings, right? And the reason for that is for the finer seeds, um, you want to use the one with the smaller perforation. Or if you're sprouting something like quinoa, something that's really small that can get through the holes, you can use the small openings. But if you're sprouting um, chickpeas, these big openings are great because they allow for more air circulation. And all you do is you pop this lid on and you run this under the water, you, you um, shake it a little bit to get the water circulating throughout and then you let the water drain through the opening. Now you have to understand that when the seeds will sprout, they're gonna double or triple in size or even more sometimes, right? So you have to have a container that's big enough and just put, don't fill it with the growths, just put them on the bottom and then fill it with water for it to cover and as it soaks, it's gonna puff up and take up more of the space. And you're gonna leave this buckwheat to um, soak overnight at least, however, Buckwheat is very soft, so even after a few hours, you can use it in recipes, like it's edible, right? But as far as nutritional value, as far as for it to be truly sprouted, soak it overnight. I prefer to sprout buckwheat in a colander. I have this colander that's, I have this colander that's currently occupied with chickpeas, um, but I, I like to sprout in this colander because it has feet and I can stand it like this and let it soak into a plate. I usually use it for buckwheat. So all you do is once it has soaked is you're gonna put it into the colander. I'm just gonna put a little into this one, right? And um, you need to set it up so it, all the water can drain. And once a day, you're gonna rinse it. So you're gonna rinse the buckwheat and you're gonna feel buckwheat has um, I don't think it has gluten, but when you wash it, you'll feel a little bit of a, I don't know, a little slimy, <laughs> but not that much, right? And you're gonna just wash all of that off. And then you're gonna let it sit. Buckwheat usually sprouts within a couple of days. It depends on the temperature in your home. Warmer temperature will sprout faster and cooler temperature a little slower. Um, and that's it, that's all that it takes to sprout. So you just let it sit and once a day you rinse it. So once it's ready, it's gonna look like this. It's gonna have tiny little tails, which are the little sprouts. And you can taste your buckwheat because it's gonna taste different when it just sprouts a little bit as opposed to it sprouts a little bit more. So you can find the perfect taste for your taste buds. Make these, these are made from just sprouted buckwheat. So you can see, um, I don't know what to call it, but what I love to do, it, they kind of taste like cookies, um, but I love to break it into pieces, kind of like granola, and eat it with um, sesame milk or almond milk, sort of like cereal, um, or you can eat it as cookies. All it is is sprouted buckwheat like this, ground together with some cinnamon, salt, and honey. Also, some people like to sprout in the dark, like in the pantry. Mm. Um, I just sprout on my counter, it's easy for me because I will not forget to rinse them because if I put them in the pantry, I might forget it, right? <laughs> so I have them near my sink when I come in the morning, I remember I rinse them, set them up, and then the next morning I rinse again. Now is this two, does it depend on what you're sprouting, if it's two days, three days? Absolutely. Is it rule of thumb three days? Or? No, 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 it depends on what it is okay. you're sprouting and how much you want to sprout, right? So for example, like these, you could see their tails are a little bit longer because I wanted that sort of the length more, of the sprouts, more. right? But like chickpeas, I like their taste the best when they just pop, when the sprout just comes out. When it comes out more, I feel like it tastes a little more earthy, so mm -hmm. I, I don't love the taste as yeah, much. Just, some, just enough. Before. Yes, just a little bit. Um, so that depends on that. And the third variable is temperature. 
So in the warmth, it's going to sprout faster. Mm -hmm. In the cold temperature, it's going to sprout cooler. I mean, slower. And the other interesting thing, because this is about the plant coming alive, mm -hmm. um, everything affects it. I, I know it's going to sound a little bit out there, <laughs> what I'm going to say, but a, the plant has a very similar receptivity as we human beings do. Mm -hmm. Very similar. There's been plenty of studies and, and things done where the plant um, will feel the, 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 the environment, right? So the, the, the more... Uh, yeah. No, yeah, they'll take it in. Not only that, you, you can yeah. pretty much taste the environment in your sprouts, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So if it's a very wholesome and the environment that the plant likes, you're gonna taste that, right? And if it's an environment in which the plant is not happy, you're gonna taste that too. So wow. it's a, yeah, it's quite a, um, you're basically, your your environment of your home or wherever you are that you would be sprouting would be reflected. Um, it's really cool to have a possibility, like if you're living somewhere near nature, to maybe set this out in a, in, in like in the woods, you know, you may want to cover it so that there's no bugs crawling in there, but it could be kind of interesting. I See haven't had, yeah. absolutely, because it yeah. will absorb the flavors of the forest. It will oh. absorb the flavors of your environment, right? I just haven't had that luxury yet. <laughs> to I've, got, do that. I've got a creek right behind my house, right? Yeah. So maybe we'll sprout some out there and see if it's different from inside or whatever. It's fun. To, and that's the whole thing about this new lifestyle. It's so free and so flexible. I mean, you can do all kinds of different things. I saw a video earlier today where she said, put some salt and pepper on your cantaloupe. And I never thought about that, but you know, it's just learning a new way of cooking. And I, I personally love to cook and I've had to relearn how to, to do everything. So it's, it's just one of those things where it's just like a new thing in your life that can be so beneficial to you physically, mentally, spiritually. I, my skin is softer, is another thing I've noticed. My skin is softer, my, I'm more mentally alert, I, you know, more awake with no caffeine, and just so many benefits. Just, you know, what you put in is what comes out. And I love it, I, you know, I'm just needing to learn from the master here. <laughs> yeah, every day, a little bit by little bit, I'll ask her a couple of things here and there. What do you think about this? And so we talked about sprouting today, it was awesome. But one thing that, um, a friend, a friend of mine was talking about what he, he's, he's a seven year vegan and he was interested and one thing that appealed to him was this whole concept of the enzymes. Whenever you cook a food more than 114 degrees, I think we said that, your nutritional value goes down. And so maybe talk a little bit more about how enzymes can help the, the body. What kind of, it's a protein, right? Um, I think of enzymes as like these particles on the molecular level, right, that assist the body or anything else because there's enzymes in foods and so forth, that assist the body to transform the food into energy. Mm -hmm. to, it's, it's a kind of alchemy, like an, a catalyst, exactly. They are considered catalysts which um, aid the body to, you know, turn these uh, chickpeas and, and, and lentils into energy source that will fuel your life because they're coming into life they're 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 getting more this like new life there's an abundance mm -hmm. of new cells mm -hmm. that are alive yeah, yeah, that yeah. are growing that you are then um putting, in your you body. Know, putting into your body and ingesting yes um imagine just how good that is for your body to eat something that is still in the process of sprouting and growing and all that energy that it takes and then when you absorb it into your bloodstream I mean only good things can happen yes um, our body has a regenerative power you know in a way our body every day every moment there are cells that die and new cells are being born in all of our bodies it doesn't matter how old you are I know it's it's a little bit difficult to believe that as we get older that well what do you mean regenerative I'm getting older but really your body does regenerate continuously and so this is just a little way of helping the body to do that right Right, and from what I understand your body does that really well up until you're seven and then when you're 30 it does not regenerate like it like 30 they say it's a wall I mean your body doesn't so if you if you feed the good stuff it'll it'll balance out 
the slowness of how it regenerates itself. Right, right. I mean, mm. This is good stuff. So we're going to make, um, I didn't talk about the, the buckwheat, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to tell you guys, because sometimes it's a little bit difficult with the buckwheat, because what typically is available in the store is roasted buckwheat. It looks brown, dark brown. And what you want to get is green buckwheat or raw buckwheat. And you can find it in like Whole Foods or natural grocers. Um, but this is a, um, the ones that I buy from Amazon and it's a five pound bag and it's like $4 a pound, which is a great price. Remember, remember I was telling you that this is a, 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 an economical food source? Lentils, which are so inexpensive. And you know, I may put like this much into this jar because it's going to expand and make a lot more food because it's growing, right? So you have to remember it's going to quadruple. So you're going to have a lot of food from very little. Right. And if I can say one thing, one thing I've learned in transitioning this month is when you do eat this, you need more calories than you think. Um, a lot of people will quit after a month because they feel tired or they, and it's not because it's not doing them right, it's just they're not getting enough calories. So when you go raw, you need to really bulk up. You, I mean, I have a salad typically this big because by the time it gets through the system, it's only this much of food. So just be aware of, of that's a new thing. You probably forgot about that. You know all about that. I but eat I'm telling lot, you, yeah. yeah, you need to get make sure you get enough calories, or you're going to be tired. And it's not because it's not the good food; it's just you know get get more food there. As I was telling you, I eat this way because I love eating. Mm -hmm. I love the food, and I love the flavors, and so it is a bit of an indulgence in this way. My name is Lucia, and you just told me that you love cooking. Yep, that's awesome. I am honored to have you in my kitchen. <laughs> So what should we call it? Healthy jump start? Healthy breakfast? Healthy dish? Wait, raw vegan something. Like raw vegan. Raw vegan lentil breakfast. Yeah. Sounds good? Raw vegan lentil breakfast, yeah. So we're making raw vegan lentil breakfast. So at first you need to chop up some apples as fine as you can. All Do right. the peel? You can have one with the peel. It doesn't matter, like when I make it for myself, I don't take the peels off, but if I make it for someone, I take the peels off because the texture is a little nicer, right? So it just depends. But there's a lot of goodness in the peels too, so I leave them mm -hmm. on. So we're gonna use this. Do you wanna put some in this bowl? Mm -hmm. Apples or the? The lentils. So we're gonna put some lentils in the bowl. These are already sprouted. Perfect, and then add some apples. My hands? Yeah, that's fine. Do you know that our hands transmit energy? So when you touch food, like apples have water in them, you can put your intentions into it. So if you put those apples in there with your hands with like the intention of love and health, then that will bring it into your life as you eat them. Is that enough? Sure, you can put all of them unless you want to eat some. So you can leave some for you to eat and the rest you can put in there. And then we're going to add some cinnamon. I like to add just a little bit of salt to the food. So if you want to sprinkle just a tiny bit of salt, um, it just brings out the flavors. You don't have to add um, yeah, you don't have to add um, salt, but it just brings out the flavors, makes them a little brighter. Mm -hmm. And then you want to pour honey. Just pour as much honey as good for your taste. So if you want it sweeter, you can pour a little bit more. That's beautiful. Look how you're pouring that honey. Uh, you can take your spoon, where's that spoon you have it, and stir it up all together. You have to stir it really good so that cinnamon mixes with the honey and the olive oil. I now, apples. if you let it sit for a little bit, the flavors will absorb it better too because mm -hmm. we just made it, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes I'll make it like at night and mm -hmm. I'll eat it the next morning, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The apples with the cinnamon are the best. 
I know, it's my favorite. Thank you for helping to make that. We are gonna make one more very easy recipe with your sprouts, but we're gonna use buckwheat sprouts. Ready? Mm -hmm. So use those. Mm -hmm. You can use your spoon if you want and put them in the bowl. Thank you guys so much. I hope that you received some useful information about sprouts and I really hope that you're going to give it a try at home um, and try some of the sprouts. I think I'll give you a list of the sprouts. Uh, I'll, uh, sorry. I'll give you a list of the ingredients that you can sprout and hopefully you're going to give it a try and you're going to have yummy, delicious little bits of energy in your life. Yeah. Bye. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Thank you so much guys for coming and for helping us. It's our pleasure. Today. We had a great time. This is so fun. <laughs> Look at all the helpers I had in the kitchen. Yeah. This is awesome.